Hi, this is Atme with the Bulletin Board Heroes for Monday the 6th of March. Starting off with the FTSE 100, where we've got that uh, uptrend line in the RSI window, which I was trying to just extend a bit. Uh, that's based at uh, the neutral 50 level, so looks okay from that perspective, but a slight uh, bull trap through 79.50 on Friday gives us a slight concern. Might suggest that a break of a recent support around 78.50 could lead back to the 50-day moving average at 7800 and given that that's what shouldn't happen that's probably what the FTSE will try and deliver for us through 7880 and uh, we've got the chance of uh, moving up to the top of that uh, rising channel there from September as high as 8200 perhaps as soon as the end of this month but uh, that might be pushing it a little on to the DAX which was Looking quite sprightly at the end of the week, and in fact, it looks even more sprightly at the beginning of this week. We had an unfilled gap to the upside on Friday. We've broken the high of that day, so that's a technical signal there at uh, above 15,600. Uh, we're going to end of day close above that, then we're looking at 16,000 over the next few weeks, uh, hopefully by the end of this month. Big picture target for the end of next month up to the resistance line, the steeper resistance line there from September, as high as 16,800. So it looks like the DAX is doing its own thing after that little bear trap below 15,200 that we had on Thursday. On to the Dow, which has been the uh, difficult one and the big trio here. Uh, here we've had a bounce, a rebound off a falling RSI support line. We've bounced above the 200-day moving average for the second time in, in the recent past. The last time we did that was in December, which was a very healthy sign. This may be even more healthy, given the way that the 200-day line is now rising. All we're waiting for now really is a proper end of day close through the neutral RSI 50 level. We're just below that now and the now rising 50 day moving average at 33,500. If you can do that, then we would be reasonably confident that we'll break that one year resistance line 34,200 and then could later in the spring head up towards uh, 36,500 at the top of that rising trend channel from August. Obviously, there's a lot of ifs in there. And uh, the ideal scenario is that we go, don't go anywhere near the 200-day moving average of 32,300 in the meantime. Moving on to Bitcoin, which had a bit of a pie in the face uh, from the uh, Silvergate uh, debacle last week. Uh, it's another sort of a mini FTX situation, perhaps not as bad. What's interesting here is we've got an uptrend line there, which is neckline support. That's around the 22,000 level. The longer we can stay above that and with an end of day close above the 50 day moving average at 22,000 or other 23,000, we could then still regroup breaking 25,000 and heading up towards the top of that broadening June triangle. But uh, lots of uh, conditionals there as well. We did gap down through the 50 day moving average. So the key here is this market finding support at 22,000. If it doesn't, then there's a risk of a move down to the still falling 200 day moving average at 19,700. So a little bit of a head and shoulders formation there with a broken right shoulder, which is obviously slightly ominous if you're into that kind of thing. On to the small caps and uh, an interesting situation at Amil Minerals where the market uh, did not like the deal the company made and was perhaps too cynical about uh, what it was delivering. Maybe today, uh, the company has proved them wrong. What is interesting, though, is that uh, in a bear market, people tend to get rather too negative on news flow, rather more than perhaps they should. Current situation here is that we broke uh, January resistance at 1.3 pence. Above that, there's a possibility of 2.2 pence very more at that May resistance line projection. And just in case you thought uh, the move today was a bit of a bolt from the blue, we've had lower lows from January, February, March but a higher RSI line. So there was bullish divergence in those lows. Uh, so if people just looked at the technicals rather than moaning about the fundamentals, maybe they could have been into the stock below the one pence level. On to B90, which uh, reminds uh, people of a certain age of uh, Joe 90. But uh, here we've got um, unfilled gap to the upside that we had uh, last month. Uh, the target that we've had uh, for quite a few weeks now is up to seven pence, which the shares have nearly achieved. And uh, the next target above that on an end of day close through seven pence would be up to nine pence of that May resistance line projection if we can break above the uh, broadening triangle from July. At this stage, only well below the five pence level and old September resistance really delaying the upside or the ongoing 
upside for the shares. On to Amte Power, which uh, has a uh, gap through a uh, line of resistance there from August. They've got a rising 50-day moving average as well, so looking sort of sort of double signal there. Uh, what we're looking for now really is a break of uh, January resistance, 2023 resistance to date at 66 pence. If we can get that, we could be on the road towards a pound, which is post-August resistance. You can see that uh, uh, April resistance line projection heading up to as high as one pound ten, which will obviously be quite a result maybe over the next couple of months. But uh, the key here, I suppose, if you are negative, would just be to have a decent end of day or a weekly close through 66 pence, which is also the uh, 200 day moving average level. On to Clontarf, which I know is a punter's favourite or was a punter's favourite until uh, perhaps uh, May last year. Current situation, we've got a nice sideways shuffle there for the shares. Uh, looks like a mid move consolidation, uh, bull flag situation. So above 0.15, looking for 0.2 to break and then actually to fill that gap up to 0.35, maybe as soon as the end of next month. I'd say that that call uh, goes right. I would be very pleased indeed with the technicals on that chart. A stock which uh, had a great run uh, earlier in the year, earlier this year, was uh, Cleantech Lithium. And uh, what's uh, happened now is that we, uh, after hitting that resistance line from April around uh, the low 90s, we came back to test old resistance, September, October resistance around the 60 pence level. We've done that well and also bounced above the 50 day moving average. We've got the RSI above uh, neutral 50 as well. So end of day close at current levels could take the shares back to as high as 90 pence by the end of this month. If you're cautious, maybe to wait for an end of day close through that last uh, February resistance at 73 pence before calling the shares up to 90 pence big picture target maybe by the end of next month would be a move towards the one pound level which i think would be appreciated by fans of the shares on to creo or creo uh, here we've got um, the shares uh, bounce consolidating well above a rising 50-day moving average so let's see if that's enough to get a retest of last month's resistance at uh, the uh, 38 pence level and above that we're looking for 50 pence and for the shares to collide let's say with the 200 day moving average area in that zone a nice rsi bounce above the 50 level as well so in a way we've got three signals in one at the moment and uh, hopefully this is an inverted head and shoulders uh, formation turnaround backed by the bullish divergence over the course of january and february one of the stars of the moment, uh, possibly the star of the moment, is Sizzle, because every time I come up with a higher target, the shares uh, trade higher. The next target, which I think I discussed yesterday, was uh, five and a half pence. So hopefully we could see that by the end of the week. Uh, if we can get through five and a half, then the big price here would be up to seven pence. And I suppose uh, Sizzle in general shows you what happens when a persistent seller finally gets out of the way, which uh, looks as though has happened here because uh, it still took a long time for the shares to rebound even with all the good news that the company delivered uh, less high profile situation is eternity uh, but here it's got the first signs with the bear trap and the bullish divergence that we've had over recent weeks that we're going to have a turnaround here if we do get a turnaround i.e an end of day close through eight pence and the 50 day moving average we could fill the gap there up to a nine and a half pence and obviously also underline the possibility that there's a lasting turn around in the stock this stage only well below seven and a quarter pence mid close would really delay or question the recovery moving on to uh, caracal gold uh, we're uh, not in alphabetical order in uh, probably in epic code order here we've had a uh, second day with the shares just uh, creeping above that uh, resistance line there not much of a reaction in the uh, rsi window so that suggests that there is a risk of a retest of the lows around 0.2 what we're really looking for here is an end of day close above the old January uh, support there at 0.24. That's the critical level. If we can get through that, then there is a chance of a move back up to the 0.3s, etc., etc. On to uh, GTEC, which has um, also started to creep through on the upside. Here we've got a July resistance line break. Also got support there at the uh, 50 day moving average at 14 and a half pence. Above that, we're looking for a retest of the December peak near to 20 pence. 
even if the shares still need to consolidate a bit longer. Now, a lot of fans of um, Oxford cannabinoid. Uh, here you can see that uh, we've spiked through a resistance line there around the one pence level. We had a target there up to 1.4 pence, uh, which was also uh, one year resistance for the shares. Maybe we'll get a bit more than that on this current run. Uh, looking at the uh, daily chart, you can see that uh, if we can get through the one and a half pence zone, then we could be up to two pence relatively swiftly. That may be a target for the end of next month while we hold above the one pence area. So above one, looking for two on Oxford. A stock which I think I covered yesterday and had a rather good day today. It was um, Plexus. Here we were looking for five pence. Uh, we missed the target by four, by a, a quarter of a penny, which is obviously slightly upsetting, but uh, can't win them all. Uh, here we've got a situation where old uh, resistance, three and three point three five pence, is in place. If we can get through five pence, it could be up to six pence at one year resistance for the shares, but it might need to cool off. Uh, after getting near to that resistance line projection from May, the top of that broadening triangle. So let's see, hopefully we'll have a nice consolidation. But remember, this was an unfilled gap to the upside. So while that holds, we're looking at a pretty strong situation after the uh, double bounce of the 200 day moving average and RSI 50. Uh, the last stock of the day is Physiomics, um, which uh, People will be hoping we'll do the same as uh, Plexus. Here we've had a nice bounce off the 50-day uh, moving average, rising 50-day moving average with a key reversal to the upside. We've also had a bounce off RSI 50. So it looks like there is a setup there for a move towards six pence or maybe even six and a quarter pence over the course of March, which uh, would then obviously be a continuation of the spike that we had back in January. So basically above... Uh, Three and three quarters looking for six and a half on physiomics. That's it for me today. More updates tomorrow.